current scientific theory estimates the age of the universe to be 13.73 billion years old. In Big Bang cosmology, the observable universe, that is, the universe, the parts of the universe that we can see, the observable universe, consists of the galaxies and other matter that we can, in principle, observe from Earth in the present day because light or other signals from those objects has had time to reach us since the beginning of the cosmological expansion. In other words, it takes hundreds of millions of light years for light to reach us, and that is the universe that we can see. It's light from hundreds of millions of years ago. Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Dvarim, the first Torah portion in the book of Deuteronomy. And the book of Dvarim has a character and a flavor all its own. It's called Mishnah Torah, which really means a repetition of the Torah. And it begins with some very subtle and very elusive words of rebuke that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our master, sought to give a very gentle, a very kind yet stern rebuke to the children of Israel before he was to take his leave of them, before they were to enter into the land of Israel. And the truth is, our sages tell us the entire book of Mishnah Torah, the entire book of Devarim, is known as Sefer HaTochacha, the book of rebuke. And after the Torah was completed, Moshe, as it were, added another aspect to its completion. And the parable, the analogy that our sages use is that of a king's son. And all the while that the young prince was doing his father's bidding and was staying within the confines of the palace, staying within the confines of everything that his father required of him, there was no place or purpose for any sort of rebuke. But when occasionally the young son erred and, and strayed from the path of his father, the father would send a loved one to gently give rebuke to the son. And the truth is that even though this messenger, this loved one, was speaking with his own mouth, with his own voice, he wasn't really saying his own words. He was saying the words of the king himself, which were designed to bring the son back to the father. So too, Moshe Rabbeinu added here, Sefer Devarim, but it's all really from Hashem himself. It's the completion of the Torah. So everybody knows that in the beginning of the portion of Devarim, we have this very beautiful concept of the very subtle rebuke that Moshe gave in the first few verses of the Parsha, where he alluded to the whole litany, the whole gauntlet of all of the sins of the generation of the desert, all of the sins of the children of Israel in the desert. But he didn't really go out and and refer to these sins by name. He had too much respect for them. He had too much consideration for their feelings to do that. And this, of course, is a whole other story, a whole beautiful concept of the real relationship between a leader and his generation. And Moshe, who was so selfless and who loved his people so much, he needed to rebuke them, but he did it in such a way so as not to insult them. And here in the first chapter, after he has told them off, as it were, and given them some of this hidden rebuke. In verse 10, we find Moshe says, Hashem, your God, has multiplied you. And behold, today you are as the stars of heaven for multitude. May Hashem, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousandfold and bless you as he has spoken to you. This in itself is very beautiful. After his words of rebuke, obviously he wasn't just telling them off with any sort of animosity or any sort of, any sort of personal heat or any sort of idea of vengeance. Because after he finished rebuking them, he blessed them that they should even be multiplied a thousandfold. But Rashi on this verse tells us why indeed did Moshe use the analogy of stars? And Rashi says, were they indeed as numerous as the stars of heaven at that time? After all, they numbered only 600,000 souls. So what does it mean, as you are today? And Rashi tells us that it's actually a metaphor. He tells us that the idea here is that you are likened today 
to the stars in that you will live forever like the stars. This is the words of our holy Rashi. However, this in itself is not exactly the truth, certainly not according to Big Bang cosmology. We know that, to paraphrase or to quote, the great Andre Schwartz Bartz in his classic novel of the Jewish experience, The Last of the Just, that book opens with the words, our eyes register the light of dead stars. So the truth is, Moshe compared the children of Israel to the stars. Rashi tells us, not as far as their number is concerned, but as far as the, the power of their light to last forever. But the truth is that the stars that we see, perhaps, aren't even there anymore. It just takes a long time for that light to reach us. All of this is very reminiscent of another very, very beautiful and moving and important verse, this one in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 tells us, The wise will shine like the radiance of the firmament, and those who teach righteousness to the multitudes will shine like the stars forever and ever. Here we find the same concept, this comparison to the stars shining forever. And there are many commentaries that deal with this issue, and some point out the idea that, for example, uh, during the day, we don't see the light of the stars, but they're there anyway. And others talk about the fact that there is a certain concept here that the tzaddikim, the righteous people, those that are mizake'et harabim, those that teach the many righteousness as well, their light actually lasts after death as well. And the idea here really is very simple, because everything that we've said is absolutely true. Our eyes do register the light of dead stars, but that's all that we see. The only starlight that we actually see is the stars from long ago. And the idea here, the Torah is telling us, and Moshe is telling us, and Daniel, this beautiful idea, that the deeds of the tzaddikim, the deeds of the great people, they do last forever, and they shine forever. And the light that we see, and the light that reaches us, is cumulative. And so Moshe compares that generation. He says, you are like the stars of the heavens, meaning that your light is going to be shining forever. And it's a cumulative light. And all of the light that will ever reach the world, and all of the light that will inspire the future generations, and all of the light upon which, which we can base our own actions and our own strivings for fulfillments, it's all based on the light of the stars of the previous generations and, the, and the, the assurance and the promise and the analogy. The words of Hashem here making it very clear that the children of Israel, that light will last forever. And the light of those previous generations, that cumulative light continues to expand, continues to shine into the universe forever and ever.